This program contains surgical procedures. This program contains animal treatment that may concern some viewers. How are you? I'm very good. Is the rest of our team lots yeah. of faces today? Yeah. As long as he's sitting up on alert, how's your hand doing? Yes, better, a lot better. My name is Dr. Ranjana Srivastava. I'm an oncologist. How's chemo going today? Every day in Australia, 360 people learn they have cancer. It goes without saying. It's a very stressful time. I often think about how stress affects my patient's prognosis. And it's an issue the medical community has long debated. How are you going? No, good. Is this your first lot? Yeah, yeah this right. is the first one. From my own clinical experience, it does seem that stress has a negative effect on cancer outcomes. But to date, we haven't had good signs to know how this happens. New Australian research has identified pathways caused by stress that facilitate the movement of cancer cells around the body. The stress is sort of acting like a fertilizer and helping the tumor cell take hold and colonize those other organs. What's more important, the researchers may have found a way to prevent it. I apologise in advance. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't jump. No, no. My patient, Robert Denny, was diagnosed with bowel cancer in December 2014. Just have a feel of your liver. Big breath in and out. Robert's been having chemotherapy, and it has been a difficult time. How does Mary think you're travelling now? She's quite happy with me. She says uh, I get a bit bad tempered. But <laughs> as, it, as they say, it's just part of the treatment. Yeah. You know, you can't blame the chemo <laughs> for being bad tempered. <laughs> Robert's making light of it, but stress is now proving a real factor in cancer spread. Challenging circumstances activate our body's fight or flight response. In times of threat, this allows us to respond quickly. But if it becomes chronic, stress can have damaging effects on our health. It's associated with greater risk for depression, heart disease, and infectious diseases. When it comes to cancer, stress as a cause has not been convincingly proven. But over the last 10 years, Dr. Erika Sloan's lab has been looking at how stress drives metastasis. That is, the spread of an existing cancer from the original tumour. At the time that I started this research, we had an understanding of how stress affected cancer patients at a psychological level, but we really didn't understand how stress got into the body of a cancer patient and how it could affect the cancer cells. And what we found was that when a mouse has cancer, when they're stressed, the cancer hears that and it sends a signal into the cancer that allows tumour cells to escape from the cancer and spread through the body. The stress is sort of acting like a fertiliser and helping the tumour cell take hold and colonise those other organs. But they didn't know how this was happening. So we had a picture here of the lymphatic system. You can mm. see it's an amazingly vast network that goes right through the body. And we've known for quite some time that cancers spread through the lymphatic system, haven't we? Yeah, we have. We can see how close it is to the circulatory system. And for a tumour cell that's sitting here in the breast, it's really just a short jump into the lymphatic system. And from there, it's got a pathway to track right through the body. Very recently, Erica's lab discovered that stress co-ops this lymphatic network to create new, faster pathways of escape for cancer cells from a primary tumour. This research by Erica's colleague, Dr. Caroline Lee, has been looking specifically at human breast cancer, but in mice. Human stress is so multifactorial. Explain to me how you stress mice. What happens when you're stressed is you get a release of these stress hormones um, that then uh, prepare your body for, for threat. Right. So the way that we mimic this in mice is uh, through a method we call restraint stress, which is essentially just putting them into a confined space. And this activates the same pathways as humans have activated when they're in stressful situations. All right, so I can understand that that's a physiological stress that you are imposing on the mice. How 
do you measure psychological stress, which, as I see every day, is such an important component of cancer? Mice actually do like being in small confined spaces. Okay. The part that they don't like is not being able to escape. And so when we stress them in these confined spaces, this activates the psychological fear factor or the coping mechanism that we see in humans, which then leads to these physiological responses that we then can measure later. Stressed and unstressed mice are injected with human tumour cells. These cells are tagged with a protein extracted from nature, from fireflies, so they emit light. So what that enables us to do is then track the tumour cells once they're in the mouse and track where they move throughout, throughout the mouse. The mouse is anaesthetized and injected with a substance that triggers the luminescence in the tumour cells. It's then placed in an imager. So what we have here is the primary tumour. These tumour cells have spread from the primary tumour and moved up to uh, the lymph nodes here under the arm and then here into the chest. Using this and other imaging techniques, Caroline has found that stress increases the number and size of lymphatic vessels leading out of a primary tumour. So what you can see is that the flow in the mouse under stress conditions flows much faster than that in uh, the mouse under control conditions. It's just flowing through, isn't right. it? These stress-induced superhighways dramatically increase the number and size of metastases. So you see six times more spread of cancer in stress mice compared to control mice. Given that metastasis is behind the vast majority of cancer deaths, and that stress is an inevitable part of having cancer, it's cruel news. It's hard not to think about, you know, that I do have cancer and, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, you know, what can you do? Fortunately, the researchers have something positive to report too. They're hoping an age-old class of medication, beta blockers, might have a brand new role in tackling cancer. Beta blockers are commonly used for high blood pressure and cardiac arrhythmia, but they're also known to control the effects of stress. They work by blocking the stress response. And so if you have a beta blocker present, then the beta blocker will get in the way of adrenaline and stop it binding. And so heart rate doesn't go up as much, blood pressure won't go as high. When the beta blocker propranolol was given to stressed mice, the effects of stress were totally negated. What we then see is that stress no longer restructures the lymphatic uh, system and we don't get this uh, increase in spread of cancer uh, in response to stress. Although generally a safe medication, beta blockers are not without side effects. Drawing on their knowledge of how stress acts on cancer cells, the researchers hope to develop a cancer-specific beta blocker. This gives us an opportunity to design even newer generation beta blockers that we can use to target the tumour rather than targeting the heart. All this work has been done in mice, but the data is so interesting and the implication so important that it merits human study. That's what anaesthetist Dr. Jonathan Hiller is doing here at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre in Melbourne. He's conducting a pilot trial in women recently diagnosed with breast cancer and who are about to undergo surgery. We've chosen the perioperative period because as an anaesthetist, uh, we often see women have a state of increased stress and anxiety at the time of surgery and the build up to surgery following their diagnosis can be incredibly anxiety provoking. That's exactly how it was for trial participant Angela O'Regan. In January this year, Angela was diagnosed with breast cancer and told she needed surgery. I was just so absolutely petrified of having a general anaesthetic because I'd never had anything like it before. I would even ask my friend in Scotland, have you had an anaesthetic? What happened? What did you feel like? Trial participants like Angela are given either the active drug, the beta blocker propranolol, or a placebo. Because it's propranolol and it's a beta blocker, you have to check your blood pressure every day. Relax. Yep. <laughs> so I used to get Declan to check my blood pressure every day. And you have to watch it doesn't go too low because you can end up 
with different side effects, like you can end up, you know, being dizzy and feeling fit and you know, diff different things like that. It's a double blind trial, so neither the participant nor Jonathan knows who has got what. In my mind, I think I did have the right tablet. I definitely felt less stressed. I definitely, I definitely did feel less stressed, but I don't know if that was that or if it was in my mind. Angela is one of 60 women the trial is planning to recruit. About 20% overall will have lymph node involvement, but in most cases it's, it's low burden mm. disease. Before they remove the tumour, the team injects radioactive blue dye into the patient's breast to locate the key lymph node. If you look in there now, you can see the blue stain mark. Mm. So you can see the little lymphatic running down through there. Mm -hmm. Straight into the node, and mm -hmm. if you put the probe on top of it, it'll go berserk. Watch this. And Michael, why does it do that? Well, the blue dye's been injected under the nipple, and it's got into the breast's lymphatic system. And we know that if cancer cells are going to spread from a breast cancer, the place it goes to is to that first lymph node, or the sentinel node. Surgery is often the first stage of treatment for breast cancer. And despite all the care, surgery is an assault on the body, inducing a stress response that is similar to that caused by traumatic injury. Patients are exposed to a, a lot of stress uh, through the surgery and not just their anxiety. They're exposed to, to pain, through, uh, to hypothermia, a number of medications related to their anaesthetic. So we often see states of stress and what we call inflammatory stress, uh, inflammatory response, is a direct result from surgery and, and well known to exist. Participants' stress levels are analysed through blood samples taken before and after surgery. There are markers in the white cells that circulate in our body that reflect uh, our overall state of stress and anxiety. We want to see whether using beta blockers changes that signature uh, at the time of surgery. We're very keen to see whether the medication changes the behaviour of the tumour with its propensity to metastasize. Uh, we look at specific genes and specific changes in the tumour and the tumour microenvironment to see whether these changes that occurred in mice also occur as a result of the medication in women. At this stage we're looking at very specific biological features of the cancer. We're not looking at uh, the impact overall to, to women's cancer outcome. Mm -hmm. The trial is ongoing, but I'll certainly be very interested in the results. Angela's own surgery went well. She's having chemotherapy, and in the meantime, trying to keep her stress levels under control without medication. I enjoy being out on the bike and just cycling, the fresh air. Just makes you feel, makes you feel good. You can just be normal and just be, don't have all that in your mind, yeah.